again Aquaba welcome back to this channel today we're going to talk with our next practitioner Miss Sandra Williams she's going to tell us all about uh, the importance of medical checkup or physical then we're going to have um, RN Miss Cruz to demonstrate proper hand washing technique we will also be having a therapeutic walk and a view at the Bay View in East Islip. And lastly, we will have a song by Empress Juliet. Stay tuned, it's going to be interesting and educating. Hello, Miss Sandra. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to talk about the importance of physical or annual checkup. First of all, please introduce yourself briefly, please. So my name is Sandra Williams. I am an adult gerontology nurse practitioner. I graduated last year and but before then, I worked as a bedside nurse um, in the acute care setting for almost 12 years. Thank you. So please, when we talk about a physical or medical, what do we expect or what are we referring to? Because you see, so, um, sorry, why I'm choosing this topic today is a lot of people get scared when it comes to going for a medical checkup, you know, uh, the, the fear of, I don't have anything wrong with me. As soon as I go, then they, something will be diagnosed and then, you know, so on and forth. Um, so I want you to educate our viewers the importance of going for a medical checkup. Okay. So... I always tell everybody, you have to know your numbers. How do you know your numbers? If you know your numbers, you will be able to live accordingly. You, you, you can have a balanced life and you can be cautious. You can take good care of yourself based on the numbers. How do you know these numbers? You can know the numbers when you go for your annual physical. Most of us have jobs that provide insurance, health insurance, health insurance benefits. And even if you don't have it, there's Obamacare, there are hospitals that have kind of like free medical checkups that you can go. When you know, when you go to these annual physicals, that's when you get to know your numbers. These will be your blood pressure, your heart rate, your um, lab results will also show how your kidney functions are doing. I mean, how your kidneys are functioning, your liver, how your heart is doing. Sometimes it's a simple thing like the doctor listening to your heart and there may be a heart rhythm that they may need to check into. And these are all the things that you need to know. They will check your cholesterol. They will check your your hemoglobin A1C is what we use to check your blood sugar levels that has been sitting in your blood for um, the past three months. So these are all the things that when you go and do your annual physical, the, the doctors or the, the provider can look into to help you also live your life accordingly. I'm not saying that when you go, everything or something may be wrong, but you just want to keep up with it and know that there is nothing wrong and it's preventative care. Preventative care is better than, you know, getting something, a diagnosis before you start doing something about your life. So, and it also brings your care up to date with your, um, with yourself and with the provider. Um, annual physicals also provide guidance on, you know, like I said, re reducing the risk for any um, type of disease. It could be heart disease, it could be diabetes, it could be kidney injury or kidney damage, liver damage. 
people get scared because they feel like when they go something will be found and then it will scare them and you know everybody gets scared that something is they are diagnosed with something and that's going to kill them no 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 when you go and something is found it can be treated most of the things are preventable some of them can be treated like type 2 diabetes when you are pre-diabetic and you come and we find out that your A1C which we use one of the tools that we use to diagnose diabetes is starting to go up we can help with lifestyle changes you can modify things like your meals the things you eat you can have a better life you know change from a sedentary lifestyle trying to get up and just simple things like taking walks and changing your diet can simply help you not even get into the diabetes stage so, so these are some of the advantages of um doing annual physicals that is so true so um, um <clears throat> Let's say if um, if somebody comes to see a provider like yourself, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. should they expect? What do you do? What is the assessment? How does it go? So first of all, you come, um, mm -hmm. we'll get your blood pressure, we'll check your heart rate, we'll check your temperature. Most of the time for the annual physicals, we will also do lab work when we have to do we always tend to ask patients not to eat before coming and it's not just to starve the patient it's especially when you are checking the cholesterol panel um you want the patient to fast from midnight before they come in the morning because it gives you a more accurate number or numbers because it's different um numbers in one panel for the cholesterol so these are some of the things and some people also get scared because they think that we're going to stick them with a needle and it's not that bad you just think about it being stuck once a year to and it will show us most things like your kidney functions as i said earlier your liver functions and your cholesterol your blood sugar levels it shows us a lot of things so you expect to get your vital signs taken which will show us your blood pressure heart rate temperature and then we do a full physical assessment. And based on that, one of the things will also be listening to your heart rate, I mean, I mean to your heart rhythm and then the rate, right? We may catch something very tiny with very irregular rhythm, and we may have to do more further studies. Sometimes it's nothing scary. It may be just something you can live with. But sometimes it may be something serious that we, we may need to do more work up on statue on any like a small medication that can help you live a very normal quality life. So these are some of the things that we do. We do an assessment, which includes listening to you, checking your bone strength and um, doing lab lab works, you know. So those are some of the things we do. Great. So is it advisable uh, for someone trying to uh, go for an annual physical, is it advisable to keep some kind of health records before going for this checkup? Like um, you say that, for instance, I will be going for a checkup um, or someone is planning to go next week for a physical. Is it advisable for the person to keep some kind of pattern, like um, how many times uh, the person is moving his or her bowels, how many times you avoid in, and what you even ate? It, would it be helpful or advisable for an individual to keep a check or keep certain kind of records, like I mentioned, Absolutely. before going to see... Um, a practitioner or a doctor, right? It's definitely very important. And I'll break it into two categories. So the first one will be someone who will be like a very new patient. You want to bring to your provider a story and the story will be your background, your history. We want to know your family history. So 
your immediate family. You don't want to go extensively too much, but your mom, your dad, your siblings, and sometimes even your children, if you are older, we want to know if there's any family history of the very basic things like hypertension, diabetes, um, high cholesterol, cancer. You know, these are some of the things that guide us into when we do, especially the labs. If we see something that is wrong, we can compare and see that, okay, some of the things like type two diabetes or hypertension, um, you can, it, it can make more sense that, you know, the mom had that. And so the, the risk of you also getting it is, it is high. So we will have a way of kind of advising you and giving you the, a good guidance to kind of live your lifestyle in a way that you will not end up having those kind of chronic illnesses. So you make a list of um, if you've never been to the doctor's office before, you make a list of these things that your family, you know, your mom, dad, siblings, children may have. And also you want to write down some of the things like symptoms of certain things you've been going through. And a very simple and, and an example will be um, patients in their 40s, early 40s, going to 50s, and even about 50s who are in the menopausal ages, they start to have things like night sweats. These are some of the things you want to report on. You don't have to write a whole extensive um, long list. You just want to put it down like, I started having night sweats last month or a few weeks ago or since last year, or I've been having like, like burning sensations after I eat, you know, just little things like that. You want to write them down. So these are some of the things that if you are new, you want to present to your doctor because they want to know your story to be able to help better, um, you know, give you the best plan to go home and live your life um, with. And then patients who also, who already have chronic illnesses, you come, you want to, a very simple thing will be recording your blood sugar levels if you are diabetic, how it's been ranging in the mornings when you wake up. Sometimes your insulin doses may be high. We may base your numbers that you've recorded at home to make changes so that we will not be overdosing you or underdosing you. The same with blood pressure. Um, if you want to record your blood pressure at least once a day, if not a few times in a week and bring that log to your appointment. One big thing that people come to the doctor's office and don't bring are their medications. And again, these are patients who are already, who are already on medications because they have these chronic illnesses. You want to bring all your medications. You want to bring all your supplements. People don't bring their multivitamins or they go, they watch something on TV and it's a herbal supplement that helps with, um, these days, the most common one is building immune system. Most patients are on different immune, immune system boosters. So you want to bring these things to your appointment because some of these medic some of these supplements, believe it or not, highly interact with these um, medications patients are on and they don't know. So when you come into these appointments, you want to prepare yourself. One big advice I give to my patients is also to bring a pen and a paper. Because as we always say, when you see the doctor, you get a little nervous for some reason, even if you have a relationship, good relationship with the doctor or your provider, you still get a bit nervous. You, you tend to forget the most important basic things. So write them down. And when you come, you also ask questions. This is your body. You want to know why we are doing certain things. We, you want to know why we are ordering certain things for you. And, you know, just write little things. You're not going to write a whole essay, but you want to write things down that you can use to help you live quality lives when you go back home. Very, very good. You've said a lot. One important thing that you said that I want to say more is when you go and ask, they ask you for your family history. I've heard someone who said, 
oh, I have a family history of um, diabetes, but I take myself out in the name of God or in the name, you know, we are all religious people. But when it comes to science, your DNA is your DNA. If you have a family history of diabetes, hypertension, once you go for this checkup, you have to mention it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Absolutely. Are, there is no exception. So you don't sit down and challenge. Absolutely. Like, oh, oh, I cancel it. I cancel it. There is in this Jesus thing in name. my family line, but I cancel it in, with the blood. And please, you yeah, pray, so... you take your medication. All right. If you are sick, you are sick. You yeah. have to be obedient and comply. Right. Mm -hmm. When you go there, ask you of your family history, mention them, mention them. So you will get the right treatment. Right. Yes. Yes. And you get the right guidance. And I'm a exactly. very strong. Um, exactly. I tell my patients a lot that I have a very strong spiritual life and people mm -hmm. tend to kind of cannot differentiate. It's when you have a spiritual life, it's not about mm -hmm. religion because exactly all religions lead us to one god and that's what, what we are talking i'm not trying to deviate from what we are talking about but this is what i right. tell my patients yeah uh, you know you can pray and all that but if you don't do the right things mm -hmm. your body is not going to respond because you prayed and had a whole large pizza with soda bottles knowing very Tell well you have high cholesterol it. Knowing mm -hmm. very well you have high cholesterol, knowing very well you have diabetes, and mm -hmm. you've taken all these things in and thinking that when you pray, it it will not change mm -hmm. miraculously. Mm -hmm. You have to intentionally, you have to put the intention in to do mm -hmm. the right things, eat the right things, mm -hmm. make lifestyle changes that will benefit you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not also about saying that because your family history has i will give you an example myself i my family history one of the biggest things is high cholesterol so one that's one of the things that i pay very good attention to so i've made modifications to my diet hmm. when i go and do my checkups every year i pay attention to sometimes i'll see it going up to not over but up to the higher scale le level and then I tell myself, okay, I need to change some of the things that I've been eating. And when I make those changes, I see the changes in my lab work the following year when I go. So because I know my family history of high cholesterol, I'm making the changes to live my life in a way that, you know, I can modify my diet so that it won't cause me any more problems. So it, it has nothing to do with your spiritual beliefs and how miraculous you know, God can make miracles, but God has also mm -hmm. given us the wisdom to make wise choices, to, um, to exercise. You cannot be eating like 11 PM, all these junk food and going straight to bed and thinking that nothing will happen to you still be strong now. So yeah, I think we all that need to learn so from true. that. Yeah. That is so true. So if somebody is listening and is planning on taking a step into seeing um, a practitioner for mm -hmm. an annual of physical, what would be the best time? What is the best time? What can you advise to go? You know, The best time that I tell everyone. And mm -hmm. it's because I don't, we shouldn't be forgetting. We should make this a top priority. This is, the, this is our life right so you want to make it around your birthday because when your birthday is coming you want you are all happy thank god i live to be another year thank god for another mm -hmm. year okay so you want to keep getting a year more years ahead so around that time of the year you tell yourself this is also my time to go and check on how i've been doing the past year to get me to have another year on top of what I'm, how old I am. So I think that's the best advice I can give because that's what I tell everybody and my loved ones, do it around your, your birthday. And so that you don't forget, this should be a priority for everyone. Um, so that's 
I think that's the simple answer I can give for that one. That is true. That is a good reminder. That is good. What I did myself is I, I usually, or oh, I tend to go in October. So I do my, um, you know, my mammogram because October is, you know, the breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. I just pick that month so that I can do everything together. Just mm -hmm, my little mm -hmm. reminder there. That's good. Yeah. Anything to help you remember Anything when to do to it. Anything to help you remember. So we and all also, heard you what... Know, mm -hmm. uh, just to add to it. So as we age mm -hmm. and most insurance insurances that we have and the insurance company, they pay, you don't pay anything for these animals. I just want to make it clear. For memo especially when you have a family history of breast cancer or any type of cancer, they will do the routine screening for free. Mammogram is number one. Pap smear. Now, we, if you are not in the high risk category, it's every three years and they do it. It's not just the pap smear. It's a combination of different tests with the HPV. So we do it between three to five years. So you get that done. It's You're not paying anything. You get your mammogram done. As we age, you need to get your pneumonia vaccine. Some people don't take it serious. And now with the COVID, I just saw a patient um, this week and even today, and he had COVID. Um, he had COVID pneumonia. Now he has post-COVID um, fibrosis in the lungs. He was living his normal life in his 50s and now he's oxygen dependent. He cannot even get up, sit up and eat without needing more oxygen. So I tell patients, you get your pneumonia vaccine to help you cover up. We're not saying the vaccines will cure you, but it helps you not get mm -hmm. as sick when mm -hmm. these diseases come. You also need your hepatitis um, vaccines. You need your Tdap. So these are all some of the things that people don't realize that when you go and see your primary care doctor, they can tell you these and you don't have to get them all at once. You get this one in the first month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Cruz Carvajal. I'm here with Shirley from the Shirley Arthur Show. And today we're going to be talking about hand washing and why it's so important. So hand washing is one of the most simple but effective ways to stop the spread of germs and prevent infection. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna use a paper towel to open my faucet and adjust the temperature. I'm gonna throw this paper out. Next, I'm going to rinse my hands in water. I'm going to add some salt. Be generous. We want to have a nice foamy lather. So I'm going to start vigorously scrubbing my hands. I'm going to interlace my fingers. Use a circle in the palm of my hands. We're going to draw a little circle and really get a nice foamy lather. And we're going to do this from 15 to 30 seconds. One of my tips to know how long you're washing your hands is to sing the happy birthday song in your head. I know that sounds silly, but that's how we know we're, we've been washing long enough. So as we're washing, we're also gonna get under our fingernails, our wrists, to make sure that we're clean. Once your 30 seconds are up, we're gonna go ahead and rinse everything off. Okay, my hands are clean. I'm going to grab a paper towel, dry off my hands, and with the same paper towel to keep my hands clean, I'm going to close the faucet, and then we're all done. We throw out our paper towel. Thanks for watching this video.